APCO Educational Topic Number 39, Chronic Pelvic Pain. Chronic pelvic pain is a common and significant disorder of women that represents significant disability and represents 10% of all referrals to gynecologists. The objectives of this video are to define chronic pelvic pain, to define the prevalence and common etiologies of chronic pelvic pain, to describe the symptoms and physical exam findings in a patient with chronic pelvic pain, discuss evaluation and management options for chronic pelvic pain, and to discuss the psychosocial issues associated with chronic pelvic pain. Let's start with the basics with a definition. There is no generally accepted definition of chronic pelvic pain, but one proposed definition includes non-cyclic pain that lasts for greater than six months, that localizes to the anatomic pelvis, the anterior abdominal wall at or below the umbilicus, the lumbosacral back or the buttocks, and is of sufficient severity to cause functional disability or lead to medical care. The prevalence of chronic pelvic pain is 3.8% of women aged 15 to 73, which is higher than the prevalence of migraine, 2.1%, and asthma, 3.7%. Moving now to etiologies. Most often, the pain is associated with several diagnoses, including gynecologic and non-gynecologic conditions. The list of gynecological conditions is extensive and includes endometriosis, gynecologic malignancies, ovarian retention syndrome, pelvic inflammatory disease, adhesions, leiomyomata, benign cystic mesothelioma, adenomyosis, cervical stenosis, and chronic endometritis. Of all the gynecologic conditions, PID in particular increases the risk of developing chronic pelvic pain. 18 to 35 percent of women who have had PID will develop chronic pelvic pain. The mechanism is thought to involve chronic inflammation, adhesive disease, and the coexistence of psychosocial factors. The list of non-gynecological conditions that can contribute to chronic pelvic pain is extensive. However, there are two that are worth noting, irritable bowel syndrome and interstitial cystitis. Irritable bowel syndrome affects 50 to 80 percent of women with chronic pelvic pain. It is defined as recurrent abdominal pain or discomfort with a marked change in bowel habit for at least six months with symptoms experienced on at least three days of the last three months. Interstitial cystitis is a chronic inflammatory condition of the bladder often characterized by pelvic pain, urinary urgency, frequency, and dyspareunia. Let's move now to evaluation. It is important to note that the successful evaluation and treatment of a patient with chronic pelvic pain requires a patient and caring physician. The history and physical is an important time in which the physician can both gather information and establish a trusting rapport. Remember that there is a significant correlation between a history of abuse and chronic pain. During your history, ask for a description and timing of the symptoms, perform a thorough medical, surgical, menstrual, and sexual history, and obtain a psychosocial history and especially ask about depression. Depression is one of the several predictors of pain severity and is a significant indicator of responsiveness to treatment. The physical examination should be directed towards trying to uncover possible causative pathologies of the pain. The carnet sign is a tensing of the abdominal wall while raising the leg or chin, which points to a myofascial component to pain. Also, don't forget to obtain cervical cultures. The management often involves a multidisciplinary approach, which may include psychiatric evaluation, physical therapy, gastroenterology, urology, and or anesthesia. If the cause of the pain is known, then it should be treated. If the cause of the pain is unknown, then therapy will focus on pain relief. Medical therapy options to consider would be suppression of ovulation with oral contraception or a GnRH agonist may be useful. Also possible referral to GI for IBS or urology for interstitial cystitis. Surgical therapy such as hysterectomy should only be used after non-gynecological causes have been ruled out. This concludes the APCO video on chronic pelvic pain. We have defined the prevalence, common etiology, symptoms, and physical exam findings, as well as evaluation and management options for this common disease process.